Love the prophet because he loves the sinner. Love the sinner because he is you. Without the sinner, what need is there for a redeemer? Without sin, what grace has forgiveness? And then the archangel showed a vision. A city, lighter than air. I asked her, why do you show this to me, archangel? I'm not a strong man. I'm not a righteous man. I am not a holy man. And she told me the most remarkable thing. You're right, prophet. But if grace is within the grasp of one such as you, how can anyone else not see it in themselves? One man goes into the waters of baptism. A different man comes out, born again. But who is that man who lies submerged? Perhaps that swimmer is both sinner and saint until he is revealed onto the eyes of man. Madame Lutes, I have read all your books on the sciences. Mama says it's not a fit occupation for a lady, but I think she's jealous of our cleverness. Is it true that only you were allowed to visit the girl in the tower? If the lamb is lonely too, I should like to meet her, as we would have much in common. Warmest regards, Constance. I told you, Comstock. You sell them paradise and the customers expect cherubs for every chore. <laughs> no menials in God's kingdom. <laughs> well, I have a man in Georgia who leases us as many Negro convicts as you can board. Why, you can say they're simple souls in penance for rising above their station. <laughs> Whatever eases your conscience, I suppose. Father Comstock called on me today to write his biograph. Me. The man pays for exactly 100 pages in advance. Now, I'm half a Jew when I smell silver, so I say, I say, Father, your flock would pay for a thousand. You know, why settle for less? And then the prophet looks to me and says, 100 will suffice. As I know how it ends. Otis works up at the lodge part-time. He took this box from one of their secret ceremonies. And I know for sure, there is something dear inside. Problem is, Otis is more fool than not. He didn't bother to also secure a key from the Feathered Brothers to open the damn thing. Comstock came by the wagon at dawn. Man was just, he just transfixed by my trophy scalps. Asked about the white ones there. I said, well, sir, if your quarry dwells in the jungle and beds down with the local color, why split hairs? <laughs> Not a chuckle out of him. Either he ain't seen a man go native or maybe, maybe too many. Anyhow, now he's got me hunting down this Daisy Fitzroy. Hope we don't expect me to stuff and mount her. <laughs> yeah. And when the angel Columbia gave onto the founders the tools to build a new Eden, they did so without hesitation. For 85 years, they prepared the way of the Lord. But when the great apostate came, he brought war with him, and the fields of Eden were soaked with the blood of brothers. The only emancipation he had to offer was death. What exactly was the great emancipator emancipating the Negro from? 
from his daily bread, from the nobility of honest work, from wealthy patrons who sponsored them from cradle to grave, from clothing and shelter. And what have they done with their freedom? Why, go to Finkton and you shall find out. No animal is born free, except the white man. And it is our burden to care for the rest of creation. Sweet mother of Columbia, why do we worship three symbols in your memory? We worship the sword, so that we might avenge you. We worship the raven, so that we might cover the city with eyes. We worship the coffin, because it symbolizes the weight of our faith. And the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great, and he repented he had made man on the earth. Rain! Forty days and forty nights of the stuff, and he left not a thing that walked alive. You see, my friends, even God is entitled to a do-over. And what is Columbia if not another ark for another time? I guess even in a restricted area, these crackers need someone to clean the floors. <laughs> Those politicians and scientists don't bother about what they say around me because I'm some half-leaded colored boy. But I can tell they scared out of their wits by that thing they got locked upstairs. Yes, sir. They got a tiger by the tail, and they don't know whether to hang on or run. Uh, Mr. Thompson, sir, I, I replaced the entire fuse banker's ass, and the lights were all in working order last night. Last night? There they go again. We go through boxes of fuses every day as of late, and they're just in the siphon alone. I don't... Oh! oh something's happening! What? Ah! Ah! It is one thing to imagine one's future, and another to see it. I have seen the seeds of fire that will prepare the Sodom below for the coming of the Lord. But Elizabeth shall sow those seeds, not I. I will fall before the job is done. But she shall take up my mantle. The Lord is calling me home. I feel his love in every tumor because they are the train which takes me to his station. And I go with joy, knowing that Elizabeth will take my earthly place. But the false shepherd is coming to lead my lamb astray. I will not board that train until she is safe from his deceptions. What makes the girl different? I suspect it has less to do with what she is, and rather more, with what she is not. A small part of her remains from where she came. It would seem the universe does not like its peas mixed with its porridge. The Prophet may know how his own biography is going to end, but I can scarcely fathom how I'm going to start it. I mean, other than the kid's stuff you get at the Hall of Heroes, anything prior to his baptism was, and here I quote, hang on, left on the riverside. They'll call me a plagiarist, but I'm going to spend the first 30 pages regurgitating scripture. When I first seen Columbia, that sky was the brightest, bluest sky that ever was seemed like heaven. Then your eyes adjusted to the light, and you saw that sea of white faces looking hard back at you. As a boy, I had a dog named Bill. Like all dogs, Bill was a loyal friend. If we had not fed him, Bill 
would have been loyal. If we had struck him, Bill would have been loyal. Only when the colored man can make that claim will he take his place in society. This is the moment we trained for. The false shepherd is here. The day was not exact, but the prophet's sight proves out again. The specimen must be taken alive. If she dies, I suspect they will give us to the bird. And whatever pieces it leaves behind will bear no names. That was cigarette number six. This waiting is insufferable. As the months and years turned to memories, so did the men of Congress turn to righteousness. And through the technology of men, the dollars of Washington, the Lord worked his will upon Columbia and raised her high above the Sodom below. Days at Comstock House was simple. Hard work, sure, but simple. Ringing the linen, scrubbing the floors. <laughs> Lady Comstock, she even had a kind word now and then. Almost enough to make me think I had a place in their world. <laughs> God made foolish girls so he could have something to play with. And when I came to Washington, there were few in Congress who saw my vision for Columbia. But it is the burden of the prophet to bring the wicked to righteousness. For what am I, if not a mirror to reflect the face of God? When I was a girl, I dreamt of standing in a room looking at a girl who was and was not myself, who stood looking at another girl who also was and was not myself. My mother took this for a nightmare. I saw it as the beginning of a career in physics. I served two score years of soldiering, and every heathen land I've known has less people for my passing. I hated no special enemy. Until now. Comstock. He's made a vaudeville travesty of my battles and cast himself as the White Knight. I called him out over it, and he stripped me of my rank. That man has never seen the savage face of war. But he will. God makes all kinds of soldiers, but he only made one Cornelius Slate. My father followed him up San Juan Hill, through the legations in Peking, and as he put it, through hell the order was given. At today's muster, Slate asked me if I was Sergeant Monroe's daughter. I said, yes, sir, I am. Slate said, your father always wanted a son. I hope the fool has wisdom enough to recognize his good fortune. Got a tip there were contraband guns hidden in the fellow traveler. Didn't find them, but funny thing. We found some old uniforms under the floorboards from the war. <laughs> Took guesses as to why they were there, but... Who's there? You're Slate, right? Sir? Put the guns down! Ah! Did you hear that, Comstock? That is the sound you have never heard. The sound of a soldier's end. Come to your hall of heroes. Prove me a liar. The one thing people need to learn is that fear is the antidote to fear. I don't want to be a part of their world. I don't want to be a part of their culture, their politics, their people. The sun is setting on their world, and soon enough, all they're going to see is the dark. Veterans! You shed your heart's blood for Columbia! Lost limb and viscera in the godless Orient! Comstock did nothing! And yet, look up! Whose image squats above you even now? 
at every angle and insult. If the prophet would make a painted whore of our past, what fresh rape does our future hold? Let us now make our stand and fill yonder hole with true heroes. They'll call us assassins when our work is done. Cornelius Slate, the swift left hook of the Vox Populi. <laughs> we'll be trading Comstock's lie for a new one. So be it. The Fitzroy woman and I are comrades of necessity. I doubt all the men who read in Caesar's toga would still be seen breaking bread together in peacetime. With Comstock gone, my men's past deeds will be sacred. And they will claim the spoils to them. I need not live to see it. To those who loved me, I was the most generous of souls. There was no pain I would deny them. No betrayal I would not gladly give. And when I had scorched the hearts of all who loved me, the prophet said... There is nothing you can do for which I will not forgive you. For God has granted me sight, and through his eyes, even you are loved. My men and I are doomed. Doomed as noble Custer was at Little Bighorn. But we shall not yield to Comstock and his tin soldiers. But my scout has seen him. Booker DeWitt is coming here to the hall. DeWitt. We called him the White Engine of Wounded Knee for all the grisly trophies he claimed. A man such as he might just grant us the peace we seek. Oh, Preston is a sporting man, Miss Fitzroy. I won't steal up on you while you slumber like these Vox boys here with their pig stickers. No, no. That's one scalp to me. That's two. Now when you hear this, I want you to square your affairs and come die in the side of the poets. You'll need a white man's weapon. Give this a try. Samuel always thought that the pew on Sunday went hand in hand with the desk on Monday. Science is the slow revelation of God's blueprint. After two years in the Lamb's Tower on Monument Island, he took ill with cancer of the stomach. I prayed to the prophet, and the prophet delivered unto us a miracle through his servant, Fink. I do not know if I will ever get used to a husband bound in a skeleton of metal, but better a handyman than a dead one. They called Slate a monster and a traitor. I know the men who died in all of Heroes with Captain Slate. There is no shame to be counted in their number. The shame lies to we who assembled outside the hall. Though we were not the ones who fell, I feel only envy for those who perished under his banner. The truth is, I don't have a lot of time for all that prophecy nonsense. I tell you, belief is, is just a commodity. And old Comstock, well, he does produce. But like any tradesman, he's obliged to barter his product for the earthly ores. You see, one does not raise a barn on song alone. <laughs> no, sir. Why, that's fink timber, a fink hammer, and fink's hand to swing it. <laughs> he needs me, lest he soil his own. I hold in my hand the private journal of Comstock's wife. It puts the lie to this miracle child nonsense. She loved the child not. It seems the sainted lady would have preferred to let the seed of the prophet just 
dry out on the bed sheets. One day, ain't nobody noticed me. Then they think I done for Lady Comstock, and well, everybody noticed me. I head to Finkton, and I hide. I hide deep. The more they look, the deeper I go. Only thing a color child can count on is the fact they invisible. I have a pressing need to speak to this so-called false shepherd stirring up so much trouble. We got enough problems without this damn fool shooting up the city and blaming it all on the Vox. Though if he's amiable, yeah, yeah, he might be just the fellow we need for our immediate concerns. I had thought you a fool, dear brother, when you told me that you heard wonderful music trumpeting from holes in the thin air. I began to doubt your mental integrity, but not only have you made your fortune from these doodads, you have lit the path for me as well. To tax the black more than the white, is that not cruel? To forbid the mixing of the races, is that not cruel? To give the vote to the white man and deny it to the yellow, the black, the red, is that not cruel? But is it not cruel to banish your children from a perfect garden? Or drown your flock under an ocean of water? Cruelty can be instructive. And what is Columbia if not the schoolhouse of the Lord? I came to Columbia because I believed in God and because I believed in honor. But Slade has shown me this. There is no God in shutting our brothers out from the family of man. And there is no honor in defending those who are strangers to its meaning. Perhaps in Finkton, there is one more deserving of my service. When you force deep underground, well, you see things from the bottom up. And down at the bottom of the city, I saw a fire burning. A fire's got heat of plenty, but it ain't got no mouth. Daisy. Now she got herself a mouth big enough for all the fires in Columbia. Well, Fitzroy, you, you got a little cunning in you, if nothing else. Dropped a couple grizzly traps around the lines up here. Idea was to, to bleed one of your couriers till he gave you up. Except, of course, you're using kids now. Now I got this. Tiny engine boy, eyeballing me. Tried to take his leg off. Damn things just lying here between us. I sure wish he'd cry or something. They argued some fierce at night, Lady Comstock and the Prophet. Never make out what it was about for my bunk, though. After the worst, I seen she ain't left for morning prayer. So I crept upstairs to check in on her. And like a fool, I lingered. Scullery maid was what they called me when I walked into Comstock House. Murderer was what they shouted when I ran out. There's the job, and... There's life. They pay me to hate the goddamn Vox, and I take their money, but what's the harm of having a drink with Fitzroy's people? Face to face at the graveyard shift, why, they're, they're just folk. Well, I guess I fell into the goddamn bottle because I stumbled back without the evidence locker key. <laughs> if Schmidt finds out, well, there'll be hell to pay.
You ever see a forest at the beginning of a fire? For the first flame, you see them possums and squirrels running through the trees. They know what's coming. But the fat bears with their bellies full of honey, well, you can't hardly wake them up from their comfortable hibernation. We're going to Emporium, and then we're going to see what it takes to rouse them from their slumber. Samuel, when the spells of anger come, I want you to play this recording and remember that I am the proudest woman in Colombia to have been your wife. They said your soul was choked by the fumes in that metal box, but this I do not believe. And we shall meet again on that eternal shore. Both of us whole and smiling. I love you. I love you. I love you. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. As plans go, I'd seen worse, except this girl was already gone. Monument Island's a damn ghost town. It seems like they evacuated her when they heard I was here. An old friend told me Comstock spirited her off to that fortress of his. As a one-man job, this just went from betting on the river to drawing dead. Looks like I got a friend in town after all. Sleet. He's fell in with these Vox Populi. And for irregulars, I will say, they are loaded for bear. Problem is, I gotta help them with their damn revolution first. Then we take Comstock House by storm. I do that. I get the girl. These holes have shown me yet another wonder, though I've yet to see the application for it. They illuminate a merger of machine and man that is somehow the lesser, yet the greater of both parties. The process seems to be irreversible. <laughs> Perhaps, though, Comstock will have some need of this kind of thing to keep watch in that tower he is building. It's Roy. You win this fool war. You send this to New York. They ain't getting the girl. Whoever they are... Maybe I did right by you and the Vox, but in the end, they don't square anything. Anna, Anna, I'm sorry. Mr. Comstock, when we next meet, it won't be the parlor. See, I went out to that Hall of Heroes to scalp your false shepherd for you. Turns out, though, DeWitt speaks Sue. He helped me to swap words with this crippled child I've been, uh, looking after. Now, after hearing how the kid has fared in your city, I'm thinking when we take your pelt, I'll let him hold the knife. test field entangled my quantum atom with waves of light, allowing for safe measurement. Sound familiar, brother? That's because you were measuring precisely the same atom from a neighboring world. We used the universe as a telegraph. Switching the field on or off became dots and dashes. Dreadfully slow. But now you and I could whisper through the wall. Brother, what Comstock failed to understand is that our contraption is a window not into prophecy, but probability. But his money means the Lutess field could become the Lutess tear, a window between worlds, a window through which you and I might finally be together. Sally! The bastard snuck in while the Vox was shooting up the place and took my girl! Got her locked up in the salty oyster. His hidden closet, he keeps all his treasures. 
Just need to hit the button under the register to open it, but... <sighs> you have been transfused, brother, into a new reality. But your body rejects the cognitive dissonance through confusion and hemorrhage. But we are together, and I will mend you. For what separates us now but a single chromosome? I had trapped the atom in mid-air. Colleagues called my Lutes field quantum levitation. But in fact, it was nothing of the sort. Magicians levitate. My atom simply failed to fall. If an atom could be suspended indefinitely, well, why not an apple? If an apple, why not a city? Tonight, the Prophet moved against his political enemies. He preaches mercy, but 40 souls lie tonight dead in unmarked graves. If a man was ever unworthy of grace who would be my husband but when I was beyond redemption he offered it anyway how can I deny forgiveness to to one who with love granted it to me my dear brother these holes in the thin air can Continue to pay dividends. I know not which musician you borrow your notes from, but if he has half the genius of the biologist I now observe, well, then you are to be the Mozart of Columbia. In front of all the men, the sergeant looked at me and said, Your family tree shelters a teepee or two, doesn't it, son? This lie! This calumny had followed me all my life! From that day, no man truly called me comrade. It was only when I burnt the teepees with the squaws inside that they take me as one of their own. Only blood can redeem blood. This is for the miracle child. Hello. I'm sorry your mother, Lady Comstock, is dead. I think she is altogether better than mine. Since you live there, can you tell me why the tower has been closed? People say it's poor weather, then the pox, then a haunting. If it is a secret, I promise not to tell a soul. Your pen friend, Constance. Lady Comstock seems to believe the child is a result of some errant act of carnality between myself and her beloved prophet. I told the poor woman the truth, that the child was a product of our little contraption, but I think she found that less believable than her delusion. Comstock seems to have been made sterile by simple exposure to our contraption. A theory. Just as sexual reproduction can de-emphasize the traits of each parent, so goes the effect of multiple realities on our own. Your traits dissipate until they become unrecognizable or cease to exist. Comstock has sabotaged our contraption. Yet, we are not dead. A theory. We are scattered amongst the possibility space. But my brother and I are together, and so I am content. He is not. The business with the girl lies unresolved. But perhaps there is one who can finish it in our stead. I know the Prophet is a liar, but he cannot be. I know the Prophet is a murderer, but he cannot be. For if the future lies only in the imagination of God, why would he reveal it to such a... monster? Lutes says the bastard is a creation not of her womb, but of some unholy science. I do not know which is true. The child is no more divine than I. What says that? 
from my husband's prophecy. He begs my silence, but I can only offer him forgiveness. But with repentance need come truth. I can suffer his lies no longer. The Archangel tells me that Columbia will only survive so long as my line sits the throne. Yet Lady Comstock produces no child. I have done what a man can do, yet there is no child. I have asked Lutece about the matter, but even she refuses to help. That's insanity. What proof would you have that Mr. Fink would hurt the Lutesses? The Lutesses told me. Lutesses? When? Yesterday. Yesterday morning. Rupert! They've been dead these seven days. I suppose the siphon is a kind of leash. Yes, my father put it on me. But when the time came, neither did I remove it myself. What would happen if I took off the leash and I found I was... As obedient as ever. Our minds are born festering with sin. Some are so blighted they will never find redemption. The mind must be pulled up from the roots. My children are without blame, without fault and without choice. For what is the value of will when the spirit is found wanting? Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. But in the end, he is the one who will have to pay down all of our accounts, won't he? Where does his guilt start? And mine end? the days pass, I believe less in God and more in Lutes. My powers shrivel as my regrets blossom. All of this because my father failed me. By the time I realized how far I'd gone, it was too late to stop it. But there is still one last chance redemption for both of us. What I've done cannot be undone. I cannot stop what I have put in motion. But perhaps I can keep it from ever starting. He was my first hope, and now he is my last. Tomorrow the leash comes off, because all of this has to end. But even if I destroy the siphon, will I be strong enough to see all the doors and open whichever I choose? And if I bring him here, who is to say that he would be any match for the monsters I have created? The procedure should help immensely with the issues we've had with the girl. Once the device is implanted, any effort on her part to alter the state of things will emit a most painful electric shock. Pavlov made a dog salivate. We'll make this one weep. My brother has presented me with an ultimatum. If we do not send the girl back from where we brought her, he and I must part. Where he sees an empty page, I see King Lear. But he is my brother. So I shall play my part, knowing it shall all end in tears. Our contraption shows us the girl 
is the flame that shall ignite the world. My brother says we must undo what we have done. But time is more an ocean than a river. Why try to bring in a tide that will only again go out? The prophet is dying. The metastasis has aged him so quickly. Why does this Comstock decay, while a Comstock in another world remains fit? If genetics are destiny, what accounts for the difference? Perhaps exposure to the contraption? Hmm. It merits further study. When a soul is born again, what happens to the one left behind in the baptismal water? Is he simply gone? Or does he exist in some other world, alive, with sin intact? <laughs> 